Thanks for staying tuned. You are still watching iBrand Daybreak. Now, the hospitality industry is one of the industries that have stood the test of time in Nigeria. The hospitality business is a very broad business that encompasses different fields within the service industry. We have in the studio Shegun Ugedingbe, a business consultant, is going to educate us on the hospitality business ideas you can start, the pros and cons of the hospitality business, and how one can be successful in such businesses. It's money time. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Good morning, Shago. <laughs> good to good have you on iBrand Daybreak. Good morning, Bolan Lee. Okay. It's so good to be here. Yeah, good to have you. Now, the hospitality and tourism sector is indeed a broad sector, and yeah. there are different areas to explore. Talk yes. to us about the different areas and how to make money. Okay, when you look at um, your hospitality industry, you're looking at, just imagine someone who wants to travel. What are the things they are going to need? To, to start with, if you want to travel, you're thinking, okay, I want to get a visa, possibly. So that's where you have travel consultants who help you to get a visa. That is a sector. So now you have your visa, you're thinking, I need to buy my ticket to travel. So you have people who are into ticketing. That is another sector. Now you're looking at, if I get to where I'm going, where am I going to sleep? So you're looking at hotels. All right, that's another segment. Now you are in the place where you're going to, and you're looking at, where do I want to go to? We call those attractions. So okay. I want to go to places. Now, while you are there, you have to eat. So you look at restaurants. Now, you are in the air. You look at the airlines. So if you look at our mm. industry, it's, um, there's a lot of value chain in it. And that's what makes it one of the industries that you can easily key into to make the best out of it. And let me tell you, my industry is where you can start with absolutely nothing. My industry. I like the personalization. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's my, I've been in here for like 12 years. Oh, great. And um, I started with nothing. Mm. And if you're looking for a hustle, like if you have, let's say you're fresh out of school and you're looking out for how can I make money? Where do I start from? My industry is one of the places you can look at and mm. people are not really into it. One of the advantages is for you to sell in my industry, you must have good referrals. Mm. So if I say I am the best travel consultant in the world, which I am, <laughs> if I say I am the best travel <laughs> consultant in the world, Thank and I'm trying to sell to Samson, right? And you know another person who seemingly is not so good. Samson will rather buy from you and the person is not so good based on referral mm. than buy from me that is the world acclaimed travel consultant. Mm. All right. So it's basically an industry of sales. The way the industry is structured is a sales. And the best place you can start from, which I started from, is ticketing. How does it work? So the airline says that we have Lagos London tickets for 300,000. Okay. So we have big agencies who are, we call them, at times we call them consolidators, we call them, they are IATA certified, like they are regulated. But they can't sell the tickets alone. So they are looking out for who are the sub agents who necessarily might not be registered, mm -hmm. who might be on the street hustling. It has nothing to do with your degree or your education. So they are looking out for those guys to say, okay, do you know somebody? Who wants to buy a ticket? So the airline says, let's say Emirates Airline now says that I'm giving out 10% of my ticket. Then the big agency says, for you to bring someone to me, I'll give you as much as 8%. Hmm. Do you understand? Okay. So that's how it all starts. So you, you're getting your own commission. commission. So you get you yes, you get commission. No, now apart from commission, there's what we call markup. So I look at Samson and I say, Samson's a big man. He has money. So this ticket at is 300 and he's not so used to internet. Like, he doesn't have time to go and check Wakana and all of those places. Mm. So I call it for him 380. God on my side. <laughs> Something falls for it. So I make 380,000. I keep 80,000. I give 300,000 to the airline. They give me 8%. percent So that has a name, markup. You call it markup. So you put your markup. And that is how easy it is mm. to come into the aviation industry. Uh, let let me take you on, on that quickly. Um, you, you said, you know, folks who are fresh out of school, graduates, can easily delve into this. Yes. Um, that those who tell you, okay, the fact that I probably know few people that travel a lot and I can help them get tickets. If I walk to a travel agency, for example, and say, oh, I have people who do this, they may not want to, you know, recruit you as, um, should I call it, a contract staff in that sense where you can always be the middleman between the agency and um, those who will be traveling in terms of their mm. customers. Okay. So that those who would have come from that angle of um, debate or point of view, yes. that it's not as easy as you're making it seem. Now, we're talking about money, right? Yes. The best way to make money is through entrepreneurship. Okay. There's a Yoruba adage that says, permit me, it says, Ishe de omala sheje, uwuri omala shila. Job 
and, and business, they can give you satisfaction. But they are not mates. It now depends on the personality. How much do you want to delve into it? So now I just explained a simple business model. So why do you want to be an employee? You see, the truth is, a lot of people run away from money-making activities, which solely is sales. Mm. We love every other thing, but sales. You see, that sales is the broad line of the business and is the most challenging. The so if you tell me you will give, right. yes. So you tell me you want to give me 8%, and I have the liberty. I'm not resuming 8. I'm not closing 5. Mm. To go and get these people. Mm -hmm. That means the more I work, the more I earn. Mm. I'd rather choose that over you tell me to sit down Mind you, the airline, the, if I'm going to employ you, I have employees. Mm. If you say you have 20 people, I've not seen them. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me, Mr. Shekou, pay me 200,000. I've not seen them. So it's a gamble. So in my head, I'm thinking, at least if I'm bringing up an employee, I must have the salary of that employee for the next three months. Yeah, so but, I'm looking but at that's why, sorry to button, that's why he a, said contract a, a staff. Contract, a like, contract staff contract doesn't have staff to be in your employee uh, as a if you go full to, staff. If you go to any agency, you can try it now. You can after this program, just send an email and say, I would like to sell tickets on your behalf. They won't offer you employment. Do you understand? Mm. Most times, you are looking out for partners. It's, like I said, it's sales. When you talk about sales, it's usually a commission-based okay. industry. Okay. So even when they give you that opportunity, you still have to, you know, you still have to prove yourself. Mm. You know, you still have to bring something to the table. So for me, if I'm going to advise, my serious advice is, if you want to make money, you don't have to be an employee in the travel industry. If the necessity arises, you can be. And for you to be, you must have the skill set. That's how you are employable. So you are coming out of school, you don't have any, you don't, you don't have the know-how about no. the industry. And you say, okay, I want to, I want to work for you. So, it might be challenging. So talk okay. to us about the skill set. Skill you just sets, mentioned exactly. the skill set needed for this uh, job. Sales. You must be able to sell. So now my sale. first ever ticket was my dad that bought it. <laughs> Lagos to Abuja. Okay. And he kept telling me, Sheg. So now we ticket to your original. And I'm like, it's it's legit. Daddy, it this this is my newfound love. This is my business. It was at the airport. I was still calling me. Sheg. <laughs> this <laughs> this thing you did. Now, business does not stand alone. A business does not work on its own. Mm. There must be some level of human interaction. Mm. You want to render value to someone in exchange for the person's money. You need people. Yes. Do you understand? So in this our business, you must learn to sell. I analyzed the the the. Do you need to go for training to get that to, to get that that kind of um, no. Marketing when it comes strategy. to selling, everybody keeps learning every day. You can you will always have to get better. You there is no limit to selling. You can't be the best in selling. Mm. Even the best in selling is because it's a skill set. You learn it, you acquire it. Nobody is born with it. Mm. And the truth is, it's not even taught. Even if you are taught, you have to practice it. You know, it's like driving. Talkers, talkers, naturally. Uh, yeah. but, but there's always the place of training. There is no a place of training. Well. That person that is sweet talking has gotten to, to a certain level. Okay, there was the time I went for an interview and the person said, I like the way you talk. You, you, you talk well, but. But, and I was looking at the person like, but, but what? what? So you can be a sweet talker. Mm. If you are blessed with that skill, good for you. It's good for your sales. You can you leverage on that. But when you now talk about sales, you're looking at how do you prospect? Do you understand? Mm. How do you follow up? How do you close? Uh -huh. How do you prospect? How do you follow up? How do you close? So for example, I, I have a class that I teach. I, I have some group of travel agencies I consult for. Now, you want to start a travel business. You need to look from within. If you are from a home that nobody, is, nobody has traveled or you don't have that connect, that network, it might be challenging for you to sell your very first ticket. Mm. So I'm privileged because possibly my dad had the mm. opportunity to travel from Lagos. And you need to know, I made just two five on that ticket, but it was all for me. Mm -hmm. So my next sale, I had a referral. That even I, I, did, I, I still did an ARIC last week. You understand? Okay. So to start any form of business or anything, you look at... What's happening around you? Mm. Okay, okay. Um, l let me take you on now. The you talked about different aspects of value chains within yes. the sector, yes. and you've just talked about tickets and yes. what other aspects or sect um, sub sectors that you have, you know, do you, that you have that people can key into. Okay, now um, I'll use myself as an example. There are some big games that is not for children. 
<laughs> yes. It's not, it's not all the aspects that is for children. Mm -hmm. Now, the airline itself, because it's this plane that every one of us are leveraging on. Like the aircraft is the basic thing that is providing food for all of us. Mm -hmm. There are people who cater for it. There are businesses that provide food services for the airline. airline. Mm -hmm. That is a sector. The airline itself, to start up an airline is something off the roof, mm. which I believe one day God will favor me and get me there. Mm. I've talked about ticketing. Let's look at tours. All right. So in your church group, in your mosque group, you have your friends and you just Google and see Elijah Resort in Ibadan. So you send an email to them. How much is it a night? Um, what activities do we have? You go to someone that can design something for you and say Elijah Resort 1.0 or you say Bolanli and friends. You understand? And then you put down, uh, you're able to get like five people or 10 people and you make, the markup might not be much. Let's meet, say you make three three thousand, mm. and then you have thirty thousand naira to yourself. That is business. Mm. So we have to get in. We have um, we tours. have tours. tours. You understand that those are local tours. Now, if you know well about the industry and you have your connect, you now start to package international tours. Everybody wants to go to Dubai. Dubai is a thing of status. Mm, but in but the for night, those kind of uh, or that area mm. of yes, the yeah. sector, you need capital, won't you? No, you don't. Need, the one I just explained yeah, now, you don't, you don't need the tours. No, I mean for the Dubai. For and the Dubai. That, yes. No, it's the same principle. The, the only difference is one is local, one is international. international. Okay. And one will need more details. So for the Dubai, you're talking to your hotel, you're talking to how you get a visa, you're looking at, okay, when they get there, who's picking them at the airport, what are the attractions, are they doing do cruise, desert safari, are they going to Burj Khalifa, what is the cost? Now you're looking at the people that are in my network, what can they afford? Mm. There's some people you tell, I have a Dubai package for 1.5 million, they'll be like, that's crap. One, I want to fly a business class, which will be like 800,000. Yeah. Mm. And people that are in my car cost, I know they don't have plenty of money. So I'm looking out for, okay, how can I reduce this trip? So it's a, there's a whole lot of dynamics and opportunities. So I talked about ticket, how you can start. Now I've talked about tours, how you can start. Your friends. The industry is about friendship. Tourism is, when people are stressed, they are looking out to our industry to say, mm. I want to relax. You understand? Mm -hmm. So if you are a naturally friendly person, selling in my industry should be easy for you. Mm. Now, there are some technical parts. I'm not saying it is all out all easy. easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you understand? There are some technical parts, but the opportunities, it abounds. Okay, so you know this sector has been riddled with a lot of scam uh, exactly. when it comes to tourism and yes. traveling and all of that. Yes. How do you build trust in your clients? Okay, now I'll speak from both sides i'll speak from the side of a consultant and from the aspect of a client now we are moving into another segment now visa processing mm -hmm. you see visa processing is like the starting point and it's like the hot cake in nigeria because the more the economy is going on a down slope everybody wants to run away now people are looking out for where can i go to you see what is missing at that point is information the person who wants to travel does not have enough information all right. At times, even the agent that is selling the product does not have enough information. And I'll cite the example. So there was a point in time when everybody was going to work in Dubai. People still go to work in Dubai. The process is you get a three months visa, you get there, you convert it to a two years mm -hmm. after you're able to secure a job. A job yeah. Now, the agent can promise you even an earth from here and tell you, okay, everything is set, everything is set. Mind you, the first question you ask the agent is, have you been there? What guarantees do I have? have? A lot of people don't take time to do personal research when it comes to it. And the principal thing is no one has complete authority over a visa decision. It's like you're knocking on the gate of the U.S. and say, please, I want to come in. And they say, don't come in. I tell my people, what do you do? You go back and you come back another day. Mm -hmm. And you knock again, I want to come in. They say, don't come. A lot of people have gone through visa refusals. But if I had promised you even an S, that's why I said the gap, this fraud gap mm -hmm. is information. Mm. You know, some people go out deliberately to defraud people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whereas some have true intentions that doesn't work out. Mm -hmm. But it's based on information. So normally I tell my people, this thing you want to do is not 100%. Mm. My job as a consultant is to guide you, provide you information. When people come to me, what are you looking out for? Is I going to a doctor? So you come, people say, ah, Mr. Yago, how much is US? How much is Canada? I'm like, it's not... It's not a jewelry bag. It's not something you sell like that. <laughs> and because that is the information people are hearing, that is what they are looking out for. So you come to me, I say, how much is it? I say, oh, God, wait first. Before we talk about how much is it, where do you want to go to? Okay. You say, I want to go to US. So I will ask you, why do you want to go to US? Okay. Do you know anybody there? Mm. Who will help you to settle down? 
Who will pick you up at the airport? Is anybody sending you information? Um, invitation? What are your plans? Are you going for study? Is it a vacation? Do you want to jack back? There are a lot of questions we are going to ask before I now start to make my suggestion. Now, for giving you that value, mm -hmm. I am entitled to payment. Exactly. I can say, give me 100000 And I tell you, this money is my service charge. Okay. Then I tell you, go and get so, 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 so documents. Based on my experience, I've treated God knows how many applications. Mm. Based on my experience, go and get this so, so, so document. Now, this, this one we're talking about is the technical part of my job. It mm. requires experience. You can't just jump into it. Mm -hmm. So go and get all of this. The person gets it. He applies. God so good. He gets it. God so good. He gets it. I begin to brag. I feel good. Mm. You understand? And that I will tell you, the money you paid before oh, is not, it's, it's small. Though. <laughs> you need to add more money. I've had instances people go and they come back and they just dash you money. I've had instances people apply, they don't get the visa and they still come and give you money. Mm. It's all about information. So when you talk about scam, if someone cheats you once, possibly it might not be your fault. Mm -hmm. If it happens the second time, then it's your fault. If you look at Ponzi scheme, a lot of people are interested in, in it. Mm. Why? Because you just want to double your money. Mm. That is how people want to travel. I just want to travel. So they keep trying. They keep trying. Let me tell you, if you apply right and you are refused, you can apply again. again. Mm. You didn't use false information. You didn't use... Are you a parent? I have a friend that is a citizen as in the As long US. as you're using a credible source. So. Credible source. Even you... See, there's nothing about Visa you can't do yourself. What you are paying me for is the experience I'm bringing on board to Okay, so let's talk about the experience. How yeah. long is this experience? How many years or months of experience do, do you, you need, need to be solidly grounded as, as a travel consultant? How many people read books? How many people watch necessary videos? Every morning, I'm watching um, E.T. I'm watching Brian Tracy, apart from reading them. Experience is a matter of information that you consume. Mm. And you don't have to wait. If Bonali puts out a book today, it will be out of, uh, say, 5, 10, 15 years of experience. Compressed into a book that I can finish in 2-3 days. Mm. That's how you gain experience. So if you are lazy, it might take you 20 years, it might mm. take you 10 years. But if you really want it, if presently I'm running on my MBA in airline management, who sent me? Nobody. But there's a necessity, there's a test, there's a need for me to go after it. So this experience thing, is how much you are willing to devote yourself to. Then, are you submissive enough to learn from people? Mm. There are a lot of half-baked out there. And I, I was speaking with a friend yesterday. They will ask you, who taught you? With this thing you're doing. Somebody taught it, Yes, it's a gift. Mm. It's natural. But who mentored you? Mm. In my industry, I have mentors. Beyond mentors, I have friends that I ask questions. You understand? So, Experience is just start from somewhere mm. and build it. The more experience you have, the more you can charge. So as a newbie, you can say, ah, daddy, you want to go to US, let me help you. Mm. And your dad says, like my dad, <laughs> you want to spoil my passport. <laughs> say, daddy, no, let us try. Possibly you don't charge on the first one because you are just starting out. Mm. As you build capacity, you are able to charge. Okay. There are people that will even still charge more and nothing will happen. happen. <laughs> there are some people you want because they've built capacity, they tell you go and bring one million. And when you look at their status, you get to the office, you look at the cars, you look at the personality, you look at you know Nigerians, we respond to what we see. Mm. So somebody will package it well for you. I say, ah, I don't have time. Um don't spend one for five million and then we'll move on. He's not even listening to me like, ah, what's the name for five million? So Let's wrap this up because you, you, we're almost lost in all, lost in all, oh, good. <laughs> all of your marketing skills. skills. Okay, oh, I was going to ask okay. uh, about the challenges in this industry so that it can better prepare people for who, their who business. Who are trying to delve into mm. it. There will always be challenges, you know, but the reward is only for those who can persevere. We just came through coronavirus lockdown. Mm -hmm. Personally, I helped like three friends lock their shop. Even myself, lock. I was... Yes, to close up the shop now. Yeah, the rent has been... We carried their bag. We the, one of them is selling clothes now. Hmm. People quit on the industry. But you can't get the best out of it. And the truth is, the travel industry is just starting. Hmm. As long as there are human beings, people will travel. Airlines will manufacture planes. When we are facing out, the new generation one will explore. Exactly. People will always want to travel so it's an industry that the number of travel consultants we have now is not even enough to service it mm. you understand so the potential is there but the risk like you asked is there any risk an average business faces your travel firm or business 
can also face it. For instance, the hiking, the aviation field, did they affect, did they affect the affect, travel yes. consultant business? It's, I'm into sales. People travel for necessity. If they say, come and take a one billion naira project in Abuja, if your budget for initial flight was 25 and they are calling 200,000, will you go? Yes, you will go. It's what we buy that we sell. The angle I'm in, it is okay. what we buy that we sell. The airlines that are increasing the prices, if the fuel goes up, they increase. Nobody will make a loss. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? As the economy is moving, the pricing is moving with it. Okay. So the margin can be kept constant. All That's right. the beautiful thing about the business. Interesting conversation with you, Chef Thank you yeah, so yeah, much yeah. for the enlightening yes. session. Enlightenment, <laughs> All right, it's time to take another break. When we come back, the conversation definitely continues. Please stay with us.